One of the greatest phrases of all time. Welcome to a football Friday. I mean, football Friday. Oh, by the way, this may get a little bumpy today. May get a little bumpy. Okay, just to keep everybody abreast of things. Oh, and by the way, we want to thank our friends at BetUS for powering us here for the next four hours. We appreciate you going over to the website. And by the way, you might want to take the Giants in the number. Big Sills hooked you up last week. Take the Browns and the number. How you doing? Made some money if you listen to Big Sills. But then again, most of you, it takes a little bit of time before you come to your senses and understanding on what we bring to the table here. Also, today, our boy Xander Krause is going to join us at 3.30, and then the Dallas Cowboys' greatest defensive coordinator all time who worked with Vic Fangio in Chicago. Dave wants that will join us. We will talk to the three-time Super Bowl champion coordinator, get his take. Is it players or scheme? You guys keep saying that to me. Sills, Vic scheme sucks. Why'd you hire him? Dave said it flat out. By the way, let me ask you something here before we continue. How many people think Vic Fangio's scheme is one of the reasons why the Philadelphia Eagle defense is a bottom five defense? How many people think that? I'm going to give you an absolute lesson here on a comment that many of you make. Pasta says, no, not me. Abe says, me. Um, by the way, I do, says Crowley. Super chats go to the top. Please hit the like button. Part of it, 60% is players. Spin bad, spin bad, excuse me, says, I do. Okay. Well, tell me this, spin bad. Let me throw this at let me let me grab spin bad here. He thinks it's Vic Fangio's scheme. Hey Vic, Dave Wanstat was one in 15 with the Dallas Cowboys. They ran the same defense that they won three Super Bowls with. How could that be the scheme? They ran the same scheme when they were one in 15. And then two years later, they started their run of winning three Super Bowls in four years. How could it be? How could it be scheme? They did the same stuff. Dave was there the entire time. He won three Super Bowls as the coordinator of that team. Spinbad says this. Well, then it's not. Well, then it's not scheme. It's players. The scheme that Vic Fangio runs. It's not the problem. This is, this is a player problem. You're not good enough. And you're not mature enough yet with some of your younger players. It's players. This is Howie. Howie hasn't tooled the defensive side of the football good enough. It's players. Think about what I just said to you. Once that's the greatest coordinator in Cowboy history, defensively, and that includes Ernie Stauntner. Well, three years later, he would start a... He, they would win a Super Bowl with the same exact defense. I know I ran that defense. Dave's going to join us at 4.30, by the way. Crosby wants out. Can we send Huff Smith top pick? I know this is fantasy, but wishful thinking. Sean, those players aren't good enough for Max Crosby. You can't unload your garbage in a first-round pick for an elite player. Who in their right mind would want Bryce Huff, who sucks, Nolan Smith, who sucks? I'll take the one. But you offered me nothing but a one in that. Those guys aren't good players. They're marginal players. That's not good enough for Max Crosby. The one, now we're talking. You're trying to unload contract and a bad pick to me? I don't have an interest in that. 
I don't have an interest. I get it. You want to get the better end of the deal. You want the better player, but that's not going to cut it. Jenny Winder and Crash for insight. Can a defense that plays with so much cushion ever generate a lot of INTs? Well, wait a minute. Relative. Relative. Are you an Eagle fan? What up, Maniac? Please hit the like button. By the way, we'll give you our spin on what we think happens in this Giants game on Sunday. Relative, are you a, are you an Eagle fan? You guys answer your own questions sometimes. Seals, can Devontae Adams save my Jets? It's going to be a lot better. It's, it's going to be a lot better. Oh, see a fan. Okay. Relative. You had a guy on your football team in 2022 in Philadelphia that led the NFL in turnovers. And you had 70 sacks. You're asking me, can you generate turnovers and play and get big plays on that side of the ball? Well, you did in 22 because you got pressure. Pressure solves all your issues. Pressure and run stopping. <clears throat> you can't do either. I don't care what your secondary looks like. Again, I ran the same scheme with 22 and worked. I don't like it, but it works. Vic doesn't have players for it. Um, no present sire for D-line and linebackers suck. Absolutely, that's the factor, Anthony. This is a player issue. This is not a scheme issue. Dave told you this, okay? Three months ago, and he's going to reiterate it today. I'm very sure of it. This is not a, this is nothing to do with a scheme. If you generate pressure and you can stop the run effectively, by the way, remember something about that 2022 team. <clears throat> they were what, 16th, 15th and stopping the run? They weren't exceptional, but they were in the middle of the road. That's all you have to be is in the middle of the road and get pressure. Your secondary is going to look good. By the way, you had two linebackers that were over 100 tackles that year, Kaiser White and TJ Edwards. I know many of you can't stand Kaiser White, but fuck, you haven't replaced that guy yet in two years. You haven't had a player play like that. Kaiser was exceptional for you. And the other guy had 160 tackles. You had two guys in the middle of your defense that had 300 tackles in 22. You've never replaced that. How he's never replaced that. And get this, the economics were cheap for those guys. They were both making one five. Between those two linebackers that had 300 tackles between them, they made three million bucks. Well, what happened? Edwards goes to Chicago, signs a $7 million deal. White goes to Arizona and signs a $7 million annual deal. You didn't want to pay it. And you're paying for it now. You're paying for Hey, you're paying for that now. And shitty picks on defense. Throw in another pick and pay price. A piece of Huff for salary. Just want Howie to correct this. Sean, that, that, that's smart thinking. We'll pick up 60% of his contract this year. Um, then you put him in situational pass rushing out with the Raiders. Um, maybe Antonio can figure out what to do. I, I don't know. Not, 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 that's not – it's better right there. You sweetened the deal up for me. Okay? He's very young and he's good and I like him. Yes. The scheme also worked in 22 because the offense started games on fire, right? Long sustained drives, 14 play drives. You did about four of them in a game. You had a sequence of drives like that and pretty much put teams to sleep. That's correct. Teams had to pass to catch up. Absolutely true. That's absolutely true. Thank you very much, Anthony, for the super chat. My man, Xander, can't wait to rip that fire. Thanks for that, man. Love this channel. Hey, Maniac, we love you, brother. Been with us since day one. Hate fucking losing. Hate it too, dude. 
Can't stand losing. Okay. Dude, it didn't work. Get this. He says in 22, it didn't work. And he got to a Super Bowl and he had a number two pass defense in the NFL. And he had a guy who led the NFL in turnovers and interceptions. And he had 70 sacks. Didn't fucking work. Are you crazy? What, what, what didn't you like about that 22 defense? What, the 70 sacks? The high turnovers? The two linebackers in the middle? Four guys with double-digit sacks? What possibly couldn't you have loved about that 22 defense and saying that it didn't work? Hardgrave, Graham, Sweat. Um, yeah, Graham, Sweat. Hardgrave, Reddick, all double-digit sacks. Fletcher had seven. How are you saying it didn't work? Dude, they what? I'm not, I, dude, they were number two in defense. Still lost the Super Bowl. I'm not fucking talking about winning the Super Bowl. I'm talking about you having one of the better defenses in the league. Not talking about that. I'm talking about you having a good defense. Are you under the guys that you didn't have a good defense at 22? Whatever. I'm not debating with idiots who think you didn't have 70 sacks, high turnovers, two inside linebackers that were competent. I'm not debating that. It's dumb. I'm, I'm talking to idiots who don't think that. Sills, why do the Eagles draft running backs and try to change them into statues? Is it that ridiculous? Dude, they're getting away from running the ball. They don't want that identity anymore. They don't want to run the ball. They run. They ran the ball with Barkley out of necessity because of injuries. Okay. That elite 22 D made Jalen better too. I think it worked both hands. I think Jalen made them better and they made Jalen better. Absolutely. No, you're right. It sucked. That defense gave up seven points in the playoffs to the Giants and Niners. Coyote, don't talk to idiots that will try to tell you that the football team in 22 didn't have a good defense. They'll try to squeeze a narrative into a fucking ant hole if they can. That was a good defense, man. I mean, it was because of pressure. That's why. Okay? Thank you, Crowley. Tell me the last team that won a Super Bowl under a Vic-type scheme, it didn't work. We ha we gave we have up forty points to a guy that couldn't even walk. This guy's trying to tell you that fucking he gave up forty points to Patrick Mahomes, and Patrick Mahomes beat you guys by three points. Okay, Crowley, I don't give a fuck what you think. That twenty two defense was an elite defensive group. I can't remember where I saw a team with four pass rushers with double digits, and a guy who led the NFL in turnovers. You're out of your mind, guy. Whatever. Gave up 40 to Mahomes. Welcome to the NFL. Welcome to a guy who's a generational player. I'm not debating this. I'm absolutely not going to debate that. Your defenses today stink. And they've gotten worse because why? You haven't replaced the people. You haven't replaced Epps yet. Hey, by the way, do you think you've replaced Marcus Epps? Do you think you've replaced TJ Edwards? Have you replaced Javon Hardgrave? Did you? I don't think you have. I mean, right? Have you have you replaced Hardgrave? Reddick? Look at what you haven't replaced. Think about it. You haven't replaced Reddick? Hardgrave. Edwards, White, and Epps. Those are some of your leading tacklers in 22. You haven't replaced them. 
Okay. You haven't replaced any of those guys. So how can it be scheme? That's right. Good one, too. Good one, too, Jonathan. And you lost Fletcher. So you, you, you haven't replaced Fletcher Cox, Epps, White, Edwards, Hardgrave, and Reddick. Six. Six starters on your 11. And the other guys you have in there are below average players. Where in the world are you retooling your defense? <clears throat> Cooper DeGene is good. I don't know that yet. Many of you jumped the gun when it comes to Jalen Hurts. We'll see. Quinion Mitchell looks good. Looks good. There's a lot to like there. By the way, super chats go to the top. So these folks, nuts, Spags' defense didn't work with the Rams, but did with the Giants and Chiefs. You need talent to make it work. That's a great take. And I appreciate that super chat. That's exactly correct. And, and, and Sean, to your point, with Wanstead coming on at 430, Dave Wanstead ran the same exact defense when they were 1-15 in, in Dallas when they ended up going on and winning three straight Super Bowl or three Super Bowls in four years. They didn't change anything. They just added better players. The scheme didn't change. They ran that same scheme at Miami. That was the Miami Hurricane defense. Dave will tell you this. Nothing changed. Players changed. Every football team is about Jimmy's and Joe's. And some of you guys go, hey, by the way, Xander Krause said something yesterday, and I'm going to put this out there to you. Xander thinks that this is the Jalen Hurts offense. Well, if that's the case, he sucks as a coordinator. And he can't see the game because if you're telling me that that guy now is taking over the responsibilities of the offense, he is not qualified. How could a guy who's not a passer and wasn't drafted as a passer, doesn't really know how to read defenses, be the coordinator or the architect of a Jalen Hurts offense? That guy needs guidance. Lamar Jackson needs guidance in the passing game. He didn't come into the NFL as a premier passer. That's why they've got multiple people around him teaching him how to progress read. And also, they stick to the RPO and they don't climb out of that RPO. They stick to what they are, unless, unfortunately, they play the Chiefs. Okay? No one would ever. By the way, he's having a great passing stretch right now. Will that last with Lamar Jackson? I don't know. I don't know. Lamar came into the NFL as an RPO guy. And he's remained that in Baltimore. Jalen Hurts came in as an RPO guy, and he has not remained that. And if you're telling me, and I'm going to go along with Xander here, that that's Jalen Hurts' offense, he's not qualified to have his own offense, especially as a passer. But if you want to give Jalen Hurts his own offense at 22, he's totally qualified for that. He's not qualified to run a pro-style offense. I could barely read blitzes. I mean, he doesn't throw across the middle. That's it. Here's the two things. Would you not agree with this take? Here's the two things that you can always count on in a game where Jalen Hurts is the quarterback. He'll roll right, and he won't throw across the middle. Well, force him left. Make him throw across the middle. That's why the turnovers pick up. Every time he tries to throw across the middle, he throws turnovers. Eagles know this. Coaches know this. That's why they don't design plays to go across the middle. Okay? Sales, watching Kurt Warner's video, there was plenty of opportunities for him to pass down the middle. Never did. He doesn't want to do it because he knows He's not qualified to throw across the – dude, only elite quarterbacks throw across the middle of the football field. He can't. He can't.
Regardless, we still get, I don't care. Great. Sure. Whatever. Okay. Whatever. Hey. M. Reyes says this is a false narrative that Hurts doesn't throw across the middle of the field. And every time he does, he has turnovers and he rolls right. That's a false narrative? He doesn't watch a game then. And he, he doesn't watch a Jalen Hurts football game. Hurts rolls right and doesn't throw across the middle. He throws at two guys, said it in his press conference that he's more comfortable with those two men than anybody else. How is that a false narrative? Those are his words. Now, come on, Forrest. What happened in 22? 22's offense has nothing remotely close to what he's doing now. That's what's happened. And what, what, what exactly are you talking about? Forrest, I know you watch football games. There's nothing he does today that he did in 22. And there's nothing. Get this. Once again, is this a false narrative? that he doesn't throw across the middle, and that he rolls right. I, I don't give a fuck about situational plays. I'm asking you. By the way, he tried to throw across the middle, had two turnovers. Didn't throw across the middle last week, had no turnovers. That's not a false narrative. That's reality. Ironic that we don't replace the stars on defense, change the offensive scheme to the quarterback's weaknesses. They don't want to run the ball. I don't get that either. Then wonder why he's regressed. Dude, Eagle, Hurts is not regressing. They're coaching him wrong. They're coaching him wrong. He's not regressing. He's a different dude now. Jalen at 22 was talking. More throws to receivers behind the first down line, mainly either hitches, flats, screen plays under Shane Steichen. Since then, it's never been the same. It's not the same. I mean, people think today, or get this, here, here's your false narrative. Let's use an M. Reyes word. Here's your false narrative. That Hurts will ever be a passing pocket passer, and that's how you're going to win a game or a Super Bowl. That's a false narrative. That's that's absolutely a false narrative. Good take, Prince. Reminds me of Philip Rivers' offense from San Diego 10 years ago. Yeah, well, Rivers would throw across the middle. Philip Rivers is going to Hall of Fame. Did you hear Nick's presser earlier today? Still hard to listen to the guy. I'm actually starting to tune that guy out. Okay. You said the same thing about Lamar and Lamar beat your boy Burrow in a shootout sales, threw for 350 yards. I just got through saying, Andres, that he is in a great stretch right now. Here's a guy that's never thrown for more than 3,700 yards in his entire career. Even the year he led the NFL in touchdown passes, he doesn't put up big numbers, never has. But why do you think now that the passing game is opening up like it did in 22 for – by the way, his name is Derrick Henry. you got to play closer to the line of scrimmage, Andreas, because why? You can't play off the ball when you have Derrick Henry back there. This guy's six – he's six four. You play off the ball, he can fall forward for three yards. Derrick Henry's on pace for 2,000 rushing yards this year. Why do you think the passing lanes are open? Why? Like in 22. Because the Eagles had an electric passing game in 22. Electric. It was a, the, the running game was more electric than the passing game. I feared the running game more. Quarterback was electric. Now he's not. And you go into every game making it a 60-minute game. This will be a 60-minute football game on Sunday. Don't kid yourself. This is not, by the way, this will not be a big time. You're not blowing anybody out. You know why? You can't. Your offense is too inconsistent. And your defense, we're going to talk about it here. And your defense, 
last week was not any kind of optimism. The Browns are not optimism. When you beat a good football team, that's optimism. When good football teams run the ball down your throat, and I wouldn't consider the Bucs a great team. They're playing really well right now. But you can't beat the Bucs. The Bucs blow you out. I, and I know that you don't want to hear this, but the Bucs blow you out. In eight quarters of football, you've never been in a game with them. In the last two eight quarters with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, they've blown you out. Okay? They've totally blown you out. We're going to look at what happens here on Sunday. Um, I got a question for you here. Also, too, look at week seven of the National Football League. Let me ask you this about Nick Sirianni going into the game. How many people in here believe that the Eagle players? I hear Xander tell me all the time that John says that the players really love Nick Sirianni. And they enjoy being around him. Do you believe that? Do you believe they enjoy being around Nick? Absolutely not. Okay. He believes. He believes that the players like him. Okay. Well, no excuses. Go win one for your coach then. Go win one for your coach on Sunday. Okay? Go win one for your coach if you love him so much. Because last year you didn't show it. that You loved him and respected him. You fucking fell apart like you were a sunken ship. Okay, right? Okay, wait a minute. Okay. Well, win a game. Okay. End up going to the Super Bowl. What happened last year? Did they enjoy playing for him last year too? How come the players didn't stand up for him and win a game for him down the stretch? You were fighting for home field advantage, M. Reyes. And you were also fighting for the NFC East. How come they didn't fight for him? How come the players didn't fight for him? You had Jason Kelsey and Fletcher Cox. How come they didn't fight for him then? They fought for him going to the Super Bowl, but they didn't fight for him last year? Oh, I see. When things are going well, they fight for him. When things go south, they escape him. Is that right? Interesting how you look at things. When I need you the most, when shit's going sideways, I don't want to play for you. But when things are going great, I really like the guy. Is that what you're telling me? Wow. <laughs> what kind of team do you have, actually, then? If your team won't fight for you when they need you the most, when you're struggling. I need you when we're struggling, not when things are going great. I need you to back me when shit's hitting the fan. M. Reyes goes, they loved him. They went to the Super Bowl. What happened last year when they fell apart? Jason Kelsey wasn't fighting for him. Oh. It was Brian Johnson's fault. They played for Steichen during the Super Bowl year. Oh. Out on Brian Johnson. Yeah, that's it. The coach that you fired. Who looked better his offense last year at this point of the season when you were undefeated than this offense this year. M. Reyes, let me ask you something here. Brian Johnson's offense, first five games of the year versus Kellen Moore's first five games of the year. What offense looks better? The quarterback, too. Does the quarterback look better five years into this year or five games into this year? Or five games? Last, well, was it Sirianni last year? Sirianni was undefeated first five games. 
I'm care. I'm, I'm I'm confused. They were five and zero last year with Sirianni and Brian Johnson. That's not an assumption. They were five and zero last year. What's the assumption? They were better last year offensively. Or how about this? We'll take it back because the players were missing. <clears throat> the quarterback was better. How come they're not better now? Wait, Brian Johnson sucks so bad. They started ten and one. Okay, I, I just, I'm not getting it. Brian Johnson. If they wanted 22 guys, can I call you a hater? You picked them. I did. I picked them to go to Super Bowl. Because sales, they lost both coordinators and players that had made it to the Super Bowl in 23. They lost 75% of that. Then the quarterback got paid. They couldn't spend or reshape it correctly. Of course, they had brand new coordinators last year. Did they not? And they were 5-0. and They had a first place schedule last year. They won the East the previous year in 22. They didn't have an easy schedule in 23. They won the East. How come they were 5 and 0 in the offense and the quarterback looked better? Shit, for the first. Half the season, the quarterback and the offense look better. How is this negative? It's a question. Somebody, wait a minute, Dennis. How is this fucking negative? No matter what the Eagles do, you still find them. I'm answering questions from you, asshole. For people that come in here and put up a narrative like M. Reyes and say, it was Brian Johnson. I'm answering them. If it's Brian Johnson, Brian Johnson had the football team started out at 5-0. and What's different this year? That's negative? Holy shit, guy. Are you a sensitive ass bag? Give me a break, guy. Man up. Show me you got a pair. What a snowflake. Guy, ask a fucking question. Okay? It was Brian Johnson. Well, if it was Brian Johnson, Johnson's offense and the quarterback were 5-0 and last year. What's your fucking deal here? Negative? Why is the offense not look as good and the quarterback not look as good, Snowflake? It's not negative. I'm answering people's questions in here. When someone asks a question and I think it's good content, I answer a question. I can't help it if they're asking bullshit questions. I didn't think that was. M. Reyes brought the good point up because everyone seemingly blamed Brian Johnson. How can you blame Brian Johnson when he got out to a 10 and one start? Holy shit, guy. You might want to melt the snowflakes around you, dude. You're so negative. Dude, this might not be a show for you. You might need to go to that non listenable 97.5 and that other thing, that blowhorn for the Eagles. WIP, because that's more for you. This is, I'm going to start putting a PSA and a public service announcement that if you can't handle it, this ain't for you. This ain't for you. Trust me, it ain't. By the way, M. Reyes agrees with me about 2% of the time. And he, even comes in here and goes, okay, well, this, we don't shut anybody down. Holy cow, Snowflake. Dude, honest to God, this ain't the show for you. Because if you think I'm going to wave fucking pom-poms around, you're out of your mind. Unlikable team from the team goofball head coach to the team Kako Lackey Darius. <laughs> Jesus. This is a pretty tough one here, boy. I tell you, like I said, man, that guy can't handle this. Quarterback is a glitched robot mute infected. 
blow the team to smithereens. <laughs> Jesus. I appreciate the super chat. Holy shit. Okay. I don't care about people talking shit as long as you can take it back. That's right. African surf. He fucking gets it. He, he, he gets it. Brian Johnson is doing a great job in Washington. Not a pretty good job, a great job. Watch him in the commander smoke the Eagles twice this season. Robert, shit, Jane Daniels is saying it without a doubt. The two influential people in getting him in the right place and having him in the right place are Cliff Kingsbury and Brian Johnson. Says he's never had coaching like that before, and he won a Heisman Trophy at LSU. It ain't Brian Johnson, dog. It's the quarterback. It's the quarterback and the system that you want the quarterback to operate in. I love the Eagles. I'm SDA, but this team is not the same team and thus started last season with. Jalen sitting alone with no zero read, not excitement. It's His attitude sucked. I mean, I just think he's got a lot of voices um, that affect the play calling. But can you imagine Nick Sirianni's headset having all those assistant coaches all talking to Kellen Moore at once? That's why the fucking play comes in late. Should have gotten Cliff. Um, Cliff Kingsbury was going to do things his way. And by the way, his way looks pretty good right now. Dude, I knew that was going to be one of the most important hires for assistant coach. I said it in the offseason. I said the hiring of Cliff Kingsbury will be one of the most significant moves that flew under the radar because everyone looked at him as a failure head coach in Arizona. How many coaches in Arizona have been great? None. Bruce Arians, okay? Bruce Arians, sure. Dennis Green, little. Here's the analogy. If they forced Big Sills to do a show like WIP, it wouldn't be as effective. This is a fantastic, absolutely true take. Here's the analogy. If they forced Big Sills to do a show like WIP, it wouldn't be as effective. Happy thus the results would be a poor pro. Here's how, I, wait a minute. Dual threat. I'll show you how I would have to do a show. And they watch. Here's how I would have to do a show. I'll do five minutes for you here. If I was going to be asked, and I hope I don't bore you, on WIP or 97.5. You ready? Here. Great football Friday. Hey, look, folks, I really appreciate you coming aboard here. Man, I'll tell you what, the Eagles on Sunday – have a pretty tough test going up to New York. You know, it's one of those places up there that, you know, it's always a tough place to go up to MetLife. They've always battled going up there, but I really think the guys really were able to get, you know, a good bit of momentum coming out of that Cleveland Browns game. You know, hey, the defense showed up. The quarterback looked a lot better. There's no question about it that they probably got a good springboard off that game going up to New York. New York's not a very good team, but hey, let's do this. You know, don't take anybody lightly here because the defense on the other side, you know, I think they're coming along now and what's they're ahead of pace. But remember something here. They're so young still. Okay? They're so young. Remember here, the quarterback, you know, he's doing everything he can um, with the new system, the new coordinator, and you know what? He's growing. He's still an elite quarterback, but the guy is really growing along here, and he's growing with the new coordinators, even though it's kind of hard you know, when you make those switch outs here. The defensive side, I think Vic really has a pretty tough task here with some of the new players. Holy shit, man. I can't go on. Five minutes, no way. Fucking terrible. You have no idea what you're looking at then, and it's all lies. Defense is not ahead of pace. The quarterback is struggling. You are one-dimensional because you don't run the ball anymore. 
None of that's true. That's how you have to do those shows there. You can't be critical. And if you noticed, I didn't say anything about the head coach or I didn't say anything about the general manager because you'd be in the principal's office seconds after the show ended. I know, I have been. Okay? Shit, you know what would happen? Most of you that would go over and listen to me if I was on IP, you would go like this. Sills, that's a completely different show. Yeah, you got to be. You can't put a regular show on any longer there. They won't allow it. Just like Jerry Jones said, I'll get someone else to replace you. Remember, that's Odyssey in Dallas, too. That's Odyssey in Philly. WIP is Odyssey. What do you think they won't replace the host? If you're not going to kiss the ho- if you're not going to kiss the team's ass, you had a guy that's accused of fondling a woman at a at a facility with the Phillies. They covered for him. You got a guy that ruined Dexter Jackson's career as an Eagle. They covered for him. I mean. Be, let's be candid here. I mean, Dan, that sounded like the Eagles post game show for the first 10 games minus Seth Joiner's take. <laughs> right? <clears throat> Ridiculous. Okay. Um, yeah. How the hell can you talk about your team correctly with a PR department up your ass? You, Hey, Tony, when you can figure that out, you let me know because I've been trying to figure that out for 34 years. I, I, I've been trying to figure that one out. Seals, to be honest, are we ever going to win a Super Bowl like we did in 17? Because it feels like no matter how much talent we have, it feels like we're behind. You and Angelo style is not – for today's radio you're dead on will you ever hey let me ask you this who wrote that Devante. after once went down were you surprised you won the super bowl be honest were you surprised Were you surprised that you won a Super Bowl in 17? How many people were surprised you won a Super Bowl against Brady and Belichick? Dave wasn't surprised when he lost Jason Peters, your starting quarterback and your starting linebacker. course real wasn't i was i don't think anybody was not shocked that you won expectations going into 17 when did it build up when did you guys start to think you could win a super bowl probably all the way up until los angeles do you not agree Sam, what up, my friend? Please hit the like button all. Wouldn't you agree? What was that? Game 13? All the way up until 13, you probably started picking the momentum up. Probably four weeks before that, you started going, this team might win a Super Bowl because Wentz is playing out of his ass. There's not a chance in hell you thought week one you were winning a Super Bowl. No way. Why would you? About what? Week 12? And after week 13, when Wentz got hurt in L.A., there's not a chance in hell. I would say 95, 96% of you said the season's over because you lost your MVP candidate. You you didn't think you were going to win. My point is that that was a surprise victory. 
It's probably one of the biggest underdog Super Bowl wins in history. It's okay. It doesn't diminish the win. It will never diminish the win. That Super Bowl is forever on that trophy, the Lombardi trophy. You did it. But you couldn't sustain it. It wasn't built for a Super Bowl window. You had no window. You had a one-year wonder kind of deal. The next year, where'd you guys go? Nine and seven? Well, what was the next year? You you got to the divisional game in New Orleans. But what was the record? Ten and six? Nine and seven? I forget. What was the record after the Super Bowl win? So you pretty theoretically had two years, and it was over. Fast forward to 22. You had a window a little bit half the year of last year. You had a year and a half, and it went out. Your Super Bowl window was a year and a half. You guys were 9-7 and seven the year after you won the Super Bowl. Okay, well, you were never a contender again. You were never a contender. I mean, and now it's playing the same out situation, same out. Why? Because you're Jeff Kerr. Jeff Kerr made one of the greatest comments in the history of football covering a sport. Howie Roseman's style of building football teams is not sustainable. And if you hang your hat on that, you'll understand where you have to be every year. And some of the moves that you have, you have to be correct every single year in your free agency and your drafting, or it's never going to contain or continue. It never does. What's the one thing Kansas City does? Out, let's take Mahomes out of the conversation. They draft, and they draft exceptionally well. And they don't really sign free agents. Who's the biggest free agent Kansas City has signed? Kareem Hunt? Juju Smith-Schuster? Seriously, who do they sign? Do they sign any free agents? Who's San Francisco signing? Javon Hardgrave? They traded for Trent. They traded for McCaffrey. Again, it wasn't a signed free agent sign. I mean, Tyree Kill was a draft, po draft choice, dumbass. I mean, they don't sign free agents. Kansas City doesn't do any of that shit. Right? But you do it on a daily basis. Pats were four and a half favorites over the Eagles. Pats were 12 over the Giants in 08. Okay. Can't beat the... Chiefs, the Niners are soft. Niners are soft? Then so are you. You didn't beat them in a the Super Bowl either. It'll be an interesting game this weekend. Howie draft picks are starting to show promise, though. Who? Who's showing promise? Draft picks. Like who? 215. Who are showing promise? And not this year's guys, because we don't really know. Nolan Smith is showing promise. I don't think so. Dean sucks. I don't think so. Mitchell, some, yes. Jordan Davis is a joke. Ojomo, Ojomo. Well, I'm really sad that that guy's playing well. You know why? That means the two guys in front of him suck. So look, look at who you're going to. You're going to the guys that have the least amount of experience and not the guys who have been there three years. What's that tell you? Flash in the pan, most of these guys. You're talking about this year's draft. You don't have one guy on that football team that's on a second contract for Josh Sweat. That's how we drafted. I just keep bringing that up to you.
So don't talk to me about development of players. Because by the time they get to their fifth-year option, they're off the team. Smitty's on offense, dude. I'm talking about your defensive football team. Here, let's do this. Let's get to um, the game. And once again, I answer questions here on my takes and my positions. And if you think that that's negative, stop asking dumb questions that you don't want to hear the answers to. I always tell my daughter that. If you don't want to hear the answer, don't ask it. Because what you want to hear, I'm not going to tell you. And so if you happen to think that my show and what we do here is negative, stop asking fucking stupid questions that you don't want your feelings hurt on. Simple. Remember, I take what you guys say and answer questions. And if you don't want to hear what you want to hear, then don't ask the questions. <laughs> it's simple. Because I won't respond. The defense has depth, he says, and they're 29th. They have depth and they're 29th. How does that not make sense? How in the world does the defense have depth when no one's producing? This guy says the defense has depth and no one's producing. Hey, hey, Dominic, you tell me if this is depth. Fletcher Cox, Javon Hardgrave, Adami Kinsu, Linville Joseph, and Jordan Davis. That's depth. That's depth. Okay? That's a deep team. Especially in the middle. That's deep. That's a deep football team. Okay? Here. Oh, that's one of my favorite lines right here. And yet their defense is 29th. And they have 10 sacks. And five of them came in one game. And they have a top five D line. Nobody in their right mind would look at the Eagle D-line and say that your edge rushers are good. Bryce Huff is a disaster. The best player on your D-line right now is a 36-year-old player. Sweat's playing good. I like the way Josh is playing. Your two tackles, one I'm not giving the fifth-year option to, and the other guy's up and down, but you have the fifth best. Okay, Steve. I wouldn't. The Giants are superior to you in D-line, and Thibodeau's out. Top five D line. Holy shit. Is this guy blind? Do you not watch the game? We are deep in the secondary. No, you're not. You're inexperienced in the secondary. How are you, how do you constitute being deep in the secondary with guys who've only played five NFL football games? How is that deep? My God, that's not deep. Experience is deep. Not guys who haven't played and will be up and down all year. Dude, those guys are good players, it seems. But to sit there and say that you have depth because of Cooper DeJean and Quinion Mitchell is a joke. Those guys need to get NFL reps. They're a long way away from being considered really good players. Cooper DeJean looks like, hey, against the Browns, he looked good. There were times he looked really good. There were times he got turned around. Vic said the same thing in the press conference. Quinion Mitchell is now starting to get tougher assignments. Why? Because Slay's been in and out of the lineup, and you got to put your best skilled guy back there on guys. There is no doubt about that, that his game is going to, I don't want to say suffer, but I told you, one of the greatest things for Quinion Mitchell in preparing him 
for the upcoming season was you got to practice against A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith. That caught him up to speed quicker and helped him play against some of these wide receivers that he's playing. You can see it. Dude, you got to cover Quinn. You, you got to cover Quinn. Mitchell's got to cover A.J. and Devontae in practice. Dude, even if you're going through nine on seven, that's a tough cover. Okay, that's a tough cover. That's more of it right there, Sam. The D's too young and too inexperienced to be skillful and too unskilled. Yes, remember what I said? The defense will be better next year and the year after. Kind of like the Chiefs. Dude, no question about it. I think that's when you're really going to see the defense. Now, that's if they keep pieces intact which they're not known to do, which they're not known to do. Hey, w once again, you didn't do anything special to the Browns. The Browns did everything they did seasonally, average-wise. They threw the same amount of passing yards they had in previous four. They ran the ball the same. They scored the same points. You didn't do anything exceptional. You're making the unexceptional seem exceptional because you held the Browns to what? Their season averages? You didn't do anything special against them. And that's why the game was – if you were so special, the whole football team, and you got all your players back on offense, what happened? You beat the Browns by four? But still, you know, Miles Garrett made a play. That's not what I'm saying to you. You were in a fourth quarter football game and you won by four. This is sometimes I feel like I'm banging my head against something here because you can't see the you can't see the truth here. We're in no Denver Broncos defensive level. Not even close. You're a bottom five defense right now. Could it get better? Could, maybe. I don't know. Depends on what the offense does. Offense keeps getting three and outs and they have no rhythm in the first five series, your defense is going to struggle for that, and they're going to pay for that. Hurts turns the ball over, you're going to lose games that you don't want to lose and shouldn't lose. Here, let's, let's get to the Eagles and the Giant game. 97 miles separate these two franchises. When I grew up, Giants and Eagles, that was a sensational rivalry. Giants and Washington wasn't really Giants and Cowboys. The only reason that that thing had some punch to it is because Landry played with the Giants. And there was some, you know, history there with the franchise. But other than that, I grew up, I always thought it was Eagles and Giants when I was a kid. It wasn't Giants and Cowboys. It was Giants and Eagles because of the proximity of the two teams. Explain to me why the team gets injured during the two, two days of practice when all they do is tackle couch cushions. Well, this practice is really working. Dude, I, there's more guys than I are now in the, off, in the bye week we're coming out of the bye, and then now after the Cleveland game, there's a laundry list of guys. Okay? Appreciate red light, green light. Appreciate you coming aboard. Thank you. Please hit the like button for me if you could. Um, I think it's an organizational thing that they don't want to run the ball. 97 miles separate the two teams. Giants lose the tackle, Andrew Thomas, which will be an absolutely critical loss to them as they play against the Eagles front seven. By the way, that helps the Eagles front seven. Not having Andrew Thomas is one of the best left tackles in the game. MetLife is always a rocky place for Philly to go up and play. Fans will show up. It'll be a raucous place. Um, a traditional rivalry between the two teams. Um, 
it's going to probably be dubbed the Barkley Bowl. Daniel Jones has played better. As a matter of fact, he's played as well as Hurts has in the passing game. The Giants have a better passing offense, ranking-wise, right now than the Eagles do. And you can't use the excuse, well, Jalen doesn't have his guys. Daniel Jones has no guys. And Malik Neighbors has been in and out of the lineup. So that's not a, an excuse. He's averaging about 219 yards a game, which is 12th in the NFL. The Eagles are 17th. Malik Neighbors will be a problem, especially if Slay's out. The Giants' defense will be formidable. And I would say this, it's not that the Hurts and Hurts offense has been bad. It's just been inconsistent. Giant defense has 26 sacks. They lead the NFL in sacks. And by the way, Fred Johnson versus Brian Burns, something to keep an eye on. Brian Burns versus Fred Johnson, you might want to go two tight end set. How about this one? Do we not agree? Jalen Hurts cannot be outplayed by Daniel Jones in this game. Right? He cannot be outplayed by him. Or do I think he can? No. But he's played better. Okay? He's played better. Right? Hurts can't get outplayed by this guy, though. Okay? I mean... Look at this. You have the better team. Take the coaches off the field. Don't even talk about the coaches. Okay? You have the better team. Like you did against the Browns. There's no fucking excuses here. I mean, you're the better team. But why do I feel going into this game this thing's close? Because I do think it's close. And I'm pretty much going to pull the same number out that I did last week. I think the Eagles win this game 24-20. But it'll be a fourth quarter game, 60-minute ball game. And it's a divisional opponent. Most of the time these games are close. The Giants are not great, but they're better than I thought they'd be. And once again, the giant defense will create problems for that inconsistent offense of the Eagles. And if that happens, this will come down to Daniel Jones versus the Eagle defense, like it did last week. Pick your shitty quarterback versus what you got a shitty quarterback going against a shitty defense. Okay. Last week, the giant, last week, the Eagles won versus a shitty Deshaun Watson. Will they do that again against? Daniel Jones, I think they will. Jones will make it close, though. He'll make it close. Now, again, the problem that they have is they have no running game. They can't run the ball to save their life. So you're going to see three and outs. The problem is this. The secondary of the Giants is going to be like a trap for Kellen Moore and Nick and those guys and I include Nick now, that they're going to want to throw the ball. If the quarterback doesn't have rhythm and he's not accurate in this game, you're going to see three and outs like you do all the time, especially in the first 25 scripted plays. By the way, the first, the worst part of the game plan has been the first 25 scripted in all five games. All five football games. Your first 25 scripted plays have been terrible. And that's your coordinator that you say is an upgrade from Brian Johnson? I don't see that. Brian Johnson, by the way, Kellen Moore to this point, October 18th, has not been an upgrade. I mean, could that narrative change as Hurts' his game play and he plays better? Yeah. But right now, October 18th, 
It's not been an upgrade. I mean, they were 5-0 and last year. Hurts look great. I mean, Kellen Moore has not been an upgrade to this point. Rich goes like this. He asks a question here. Will the Eagles score in the first quarter of this game? Rich, here's the trend. You tell me, Rich. Would you not agree the first 25 plays and the first scripted plays of the game plan have been the worst part of the game plan? Seals, wouldn't it be a disadvantage for us to use Barkley since they know Barkley's weakness and tendencies? No. No. The weaknesses and tendencies of the Eagles is not personnel on offense. It's schematically how they use their players. Hence, throw to the numbers, never cross the middle, and when the two wide receivers are on the field, the tight end is lost. He's lost in the transition. Did he, he's just lost in the transition. It seems to me sometimes when they go to Barkley, they go to the Bar they go to Barkley sometimes out of necessity because the quarterback is not accurate. So they go to him. And Barkley's a Barkley is like a Kyle Schwarber. He's going to have a lot of misses, but he's going to hit you one for 60. And he's going to take it and hit his head on the goalpost. That's who Saquon Barkley is. He's not Derrick Henry rolling for 10 and 15 and 20 and 8 and 9 and running guys over like that. Henry's a war horse. So I believe this game will be, will have shittier quarterback play than last night's game. That was terrible. It's Hurts and AJ playing pitch and catch while the other nine watch. That's exactly how they their offensive passing game goes. Yeah, I mean, Saquon Barkley's Kyle Schwarber. He's going to strike out minus yards, two yards, three yards, four yards, 60. Kyle Schwarber, strike out, strike out, pop out, strike out, two-run homer. That's who he is. Okay? And, then, and that's who Barkley is. The war horse in Baltimore is different. That's why my style of guy is that guy. Eight, nine, five, running guys over. Loosening up secondaries and linebackers for your quarterback to have pitch and catch with your guys who are not as talented as the guys in Philly. Why do you think the people in Baltimore are having such good years in the passing game? You know why? Because both the quarterback and the running back soften up them linebackers and those edge rushers. They got to get up on the line of scrimmage. Let me tell you something. When you got a guy like Derrick Henry, and you know that that guy gets a head start, you move as close as you can to the line of scrimmage. If you're a linebacker or defensive lineman, if you don't have a big-time back back there, you play softer because you're not looking for that guy to run you over. But when you got a guy like that, you got to crowd the line of scrimmage because that guy, you don't want to give him a three-yard head start. He's going to run you over. That's why Baltimore has the effective ability to be able to throw across the middle of the field because the middle of the seam is open. Because those linebackers are playing close to the line of scrimmage. It's common sense. When you got a swimp like the Kobe Dean playing linebacker, and you got a guy like Derrick Henry, dude, I'm taking Derrick Henry and I'm running right at that fucker. That guy's a 220 pound guy versus a 255 pound running back who's 6'4. I mean, he could eat a bowl of soup off his head. Seriously, if you put Derrick Henry next to Schwimpy, Schwimpy Dean, he'd need a Tokyo phone book just to look him in the chest. I mean, when I see Nicobe Dean playing out there, he looks like he's 5'2". With a size 4 shoe. Shit, Sue's got a bigger shoe. No offense, Sue. <laughs> <laughs> hey, bet hey, between, between Dean and Nolan Smith, they look like two dudes that are 5'3", belong in a circus, walking a tight wire. <laughs> oh, man. 
Tilio, what if the Eagles had Aaron Rodgers on this team? Holy cow. Aaron Rodgers at 41. Seals, what are you expecting is going to happen with the Eagles? I expect another dysfunctional first quarter and bad scripted plays. Yeah, and they'll leak it out. Yes. And they'll leak it out. I'm not taking a shot at Sue. Why? Because Sue has big I never said Sue had big feet. I just as yeah, maybe I did. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Sue. Didn't mean it, man. I apologize. That's what you know, chicks scram, they cram their feet into like smaller shoes because they don't want their feet to look big. I don't know. It's a chick thing. I don't know. <laughs> Sue, tell me you don't have a size a pair of shoes that you squeeze your feet into because you, you you don't want those shoes to make your feet look big. Chicks do that. That's why they got them funky feet. And, uh, they, that's why they got them bunions. <laughs> no, that's you that has, no, Michelle, that's you that has petite feet. <laughs> why are we talking about Sue's feet? Yeah, uh, it's a good point. So, why did TJ and Kaiser get so much better after they left? Because the Eagles developed them. The Eagles were developing Kaiser White and TJ Edwards and said, hey, you know what? We think it's our system and we think it's us. And yet they haven't replaced them. Okay? <laughs> Sue's our homie. Yes, he is. It's all good. Hammer toes. There you go, Cody. Cody Cody dates a chick that squeezes her feet. I get it. I get it. <laughs> and so it's all good. The Kobe Dean plays like he wears tiny shoes. <laughs> ah, wait a minute. Keep evolving. I'll show you how that looks. Have we figured out, is it Sirianni's offense, Hertz's offense, or Moore's offense? Yes. So this is how, right here. Keep evolving says that this is how Nicobe plays. <laughs> That's kind of hilarious. Dean did tackle Henry with one arm at 22. Who should put that on a highlight reel? Or highlight a couple plays because he really hasn't had any. Yeah. It, he, this is how Nicobe plays. He's, that's what he's saying. Okay. Like he's tiptoeing. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, when he sees Derrick Henry, like Howie. <laughs> like Howie. Dean has a 39 uh, PFF grade dog. I'm pretty sure. He's the same size as Britton Covey. <laughs> Howie Eeny, Meeny, Mighty Mo drafts are killing me. <laughs> hey, dude, are you trying to tell me, Brian, that you think that Nicobe Dean wears a size six shoe? No man should ever wear a size six shoe. Okay. If you're wearing a size six and you're a dude, I don't know. The Y's and the X's and Z's missed you. Hey, I got a size 17 and a half foot, just so you keep it score here, okay? I got a 17 and a half foot, okay? you No man should have a size six. You have a size six? I don't know. I, I, I think the Y's in the Z's missed you. 12's a good size. There you go. See, who you got. Texas versus Georgia. Text, uh, Georgia, Tennessee, Bama. It's in Bama, Tennessee. I think that coach down at Bama. <laughs> okay. Hey, what's his name? Uh, the boring. <laughs> what, what's the coach's name now that came down from Washington? Coach the boring, like his offense. Yeah. That guy get to get run out of Tuscaloosa in one year. And they have the money to pay that guy off. 
like they did Gus Malzone at Auburn. Gus Malzone had 62 million. Wait, I'll give you a better one. Ed Ogeron. Ed Ogeron had 47 million bucks owed to him. You know what they did at LSU? Hey, coach, come on in here. We're going to have a little conversation. I'm going to tell you what Ed said to him. AD goes, yeah, I think we're going to move on, coach. You know, we're going to pay you in full. Your coach buyout and all your contract. It's 50 million bucks. You know what Ed did? Thanks a lot. Yeah. Brought you a national title. Gave you an SEC title. Only guy to do that is Saban and me. I beat Alabama. How you doing? How's Brian Kelly doing right now? How's Brian Kelly doing down there? That's the kind of money them freaks got down there in the Southeastern Conference where it matters most. Shit, if Vanderbilt played in the Big 12, they'd be undefeated. <laughs> it's almost better for us to play bad. Howie has a harder time messing it up when we draft high. <laughs> Actually, I think he does a better job, Mike, in the latter rounds than he does in the first round. He finds better football players. Forrest, I loved Coach O. We're big fans. My daughter loves Coach O. Hey, going to get no man to all the way. Woo -ya! Hey, how you doing, honey? Come over here. It's Coach O. I don't want to get too creepy, but Coach O was doing that shit in Baton Rouge. Hey, what's your name? My name is Susie Q. Oh, Susie Q, how you doing? My name is Big O. <laughs> My name is Big O Geron. You know what the Big O means, don't you? How you doing? Don't ask Kenny Pickett. He's got small hands. There's nothing small on Coach O. Ah. He was doing that shit at gas stations. He did it to the dean's wife or some shit. Crazy. Coach chased the who, man. That's for sure. He, that, one of the reasons they got him out of there is because he was chasing skirts. If the Giants win... The toss and choose to kick. We know what type of game this is going to be. Jalen better be wise on those check downs and bubble screens, John. Hey, what's that in your pants there? Oh, wait, that's me. What's in my pants? <laughs> oh, Coach, oh, man. <laughs> yeah, Coach, I was chasing the hua down in uh, Baton Rouge. That's why he got knocked out of there. Hey, how you doing, honey? It's a nice skirt you're wearing. <laughs> I'm not kidding, man. I'm not kidding. That's what he was doing down there. They did the same. They did say Coach O used to be running through the students at LSU last day. <laughs> hey, yes, very. Hey, I'll tell you what. All the sororities know who Coach O is. <laughs> hey, dude, he's been on the program, and I love the guy to death. There ain't a sorority down in Baton Rouge I haven't been in. How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Kuma La Filia. Hey, there's a famous, there's a famous sorority down in Baton Rouge, Kuma La Filia. <laughs> hey, you know I go, I'm, I belong to Kuma La Filia. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh man yeah my chase is the who too man yeah <laughs> yeah the only problem was is that during the holidays he wasn't dressed as santa come over and sit on my lap <laughs> during christmas time coach o didn't have santa's outfit on hey honey come sit on my lap how you doing he can recruit, though. Hey, hey, you know what the best thing about Ogeron is? He built USC under Pete Carroll. He was fantastic, man. And won national championships because he was the director of recruiting. Okay? Sears, where, where do you rank uh, Cam Ward in the Heisman race? I think he's second right now. I think he's second, maybe first. Travis Hunter's probably second. And the running back from Boise State's probably third right now. Sanders is not in that conversation. Milrow losing the van, he probably crushed him. But um, he'll, he'll hang around, especially if they end up winning the Southeastern Conference. 
Alabama. Big game this week against Tennessee, as we said. What, do you got a problem with me wearing an Italian shirt? Hey, Don, what do you think I am? Irish? Silly -o. Wait, hey, hey. Oh, silly -o. <laughs> And Hey, hey, right? Oh, silly -o. What do you think I'm Irish? With the number being 10, do you take the over or under the amount of play Nick calls this week on offense? Over. I say over. Hey, you think they'll play hard for their coach knowing that the coach is on the hot seat? By the way, what's the score of the game, you think? I said 24-20. What do you got? And I don't want to hear from M. Reyes on this. Um, okay, go ahead, M. Reyes. I don't care. What's the score this week? Give me some scores. I got 24-20. 25-20. Okay, Abe. 17-14. Wow. Kellen Moore will be under enormous hell on Monday. Sunday with the pre with the uh, pregame show or postgame show. If they only win, look at this man. There's my boy right there, boy. How you doing? 35-21 Gigantes. Andres, 27-7. You must think your defense is good. Look at this thing. 18-6. <laughs> Hey, Brian, let me do this for you. Hey, Brian, who scores more runs and points in the next game, the Dodgers or the Eagles? Who scores more points or runs? The L.A. Dodgers or the Eagles? Dodgers. Eagles went by 10 points or more this week. Don't have any reasoning behind it. Just a unusual gut feeling. Okay. They should. The Dodgers are going to score more runs than the Eagles are going to score points. <laughs> hey, yeah. Hey, Dodgers last night, man. I was thinking that last night watching. I go, look at the look at the Dodgers just killing the Mets. In their own building, too. And I'm like, shit, man, the offense for the Dodgers is a little more potent than the Eagle offense, led by that great Jalen Hurts. <laughs> Woo! Holy cow, man. Sorry, shoe, about the shoe size. I didn't mean that, dog. <laughs> Holy cow. M Ray is 53 to 1. <laughs> Yeah, but they're going to have a rouge or something like they do in Canada. They got a rouge or some shit where you can get a point. I don't know. And so you can, you can like a Canadian game, <laughs> a field. Of, can you imagine if that Eagle defense had to play on a Canadian field where the field is wider? <laughs> Holy shit. You talk about never setting the edge, let alone setting the edge. But hey, there's one man who has a green thumb. And this man does our pre and post. He also is the co-host of Birds 365. I listened again a little bit. I think John McMullen's water has been poisoned by Cilio because I hear a lot more, a little bit of negative stuff going on. Why am I sounding like Coach Joe? I can't get it out of my mind. Anyway, all right. He's got a big game against Tennessee, too, this week. Woo! Coach the boring versus the Vols. <laughs> Can't lose the people who make atomic bombs at Vanderbilt, dog. <laughs> that being said, we bring him in with Big Z, Xander Krause. What's up, Big Sills? How you doing, brother? I'm good, man. I'm still recovering from our segment yesterday, which was uh, – that.